passages of scripture, at least for me, is Jesus talking about the judging of the nations and how that will go about. He talks about it in Matthew 25. And he says in verse 32, he says, uh, he says, after the son of man comes in glory, he says, all the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep and the goats. And he'll put the sheep on the right and the goats on the left. And then he'll say to those on his right, come you are blessed by my Father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you for the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and gave you food, thirsty? and gave you something to drink? When were you a stranger and we welcomed you naked and gave you clothing? When was it that you were sick or in prison and we visited you? The king will then answer, truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of the members of my family, you did it to me. And then to those on the left, he basically flips the script and he says, you didn't take care of me. And then they said, well, when, when were you all those things and he responds again truly I tell you just as you did not do it to the least of these you did not do it to me and these will go away into eternal punishment but the righteous into eternal life those are hard words for us but I think they make a really powerful statement about who Jesus is and what his priorities are our Lord is a God of compassion compassion for those who are hurting, whether they're hungry, whether they're thirsty, naked, sick, in prison. And what he does is he joins himself to them by saying, what you've done to the least of these, you've done to me. That tells you something about God's heart 
for the downtrodden is the word that gets used. We might, we might say in older lingo, down on their luck. Jesus has a special place in his heart for those, for folks who are struggling in some way. And he longs to bring healing to them. That's his heartbeat. That's his desire. And he knew in order to do that, he had to overcome the human condition. Because the human condition is going to continue to lift yourself up and push everybody else down. And over the centuries of time, we've become really good at that, sadly. And Jesus is trying to break that, that cycle. And the only way he knew to break that cycle was to go to the cross. To pay the price for our sin. And he knew about the suffering and the sin and he willingly entered into that. When you think about that, he was hanging on the cross. And remember when he was on the cross, people said he saved others. He needs to save himself. But they didn't realize that he never thought about saving himself. And if he had, no one else would have ever been saved. He was on the cross and they yelled at him, If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. And again, they missed the point. It is precisely because he was the Son of God that he went to the cross. Had he really come down from the cross, which he could have done, none of us would have been saved. Because you see, the reality is we are all poor. We're all naked. We're all prisoners. We're all hungry. And our call is to point to the cross. Point to the saving work of Jesus Christ. For he is the one who can satisfy all of our needs. And as we come to that realization, then we can begin to see our brothers and sisters around us as people who are just like us, who are in need of clothing, need of being welcomed, need of being fed. As one author put, puts it, he says, his dying tells us lo God longs for us. He thirsts for us. He bleeds for us. And always will. I think that is a good message for us as we move into the very beginning of Lent. Let me pray for us. Lord, you always open our eyes to new things, to realize how far short we fall. And it is only in you, only because of you, uh, that we can even dream of being in your kingdom. Lord, we ask that as we begin to walk into this new season of Lent, that you would call us to a new place of repentance, a new place of intimacy, a new place of life, serving in your name. I ask that today. Amen. Ash Wednesday is tomorrow, and so we will join, invite you to join us for our service at 6.30, both in person and on Zoom as we begin to mark the season of preparation as we move towards Christ's death and his resurrection. Beyond that, we have our community meal that is coming uh, on Thursday of this week. And also just wanted to let you know also that uh, if you're feeling stressed out about money right now, then I invite you to check out the information that we have 
on our website about Peace University. That will be our topic, the idea of the money, uh, stress that money can cause us on the first Wednesday in March. And so we invite you to take advantage of that as well. Put that on your calendar. And again, that will be in person and on Zoom. So I hope you have a great day, everybody. God bless. Bye-bye now.